Established in the 13th century in West Africa, the Mali Empire became one of the most successful and influential empires in the region. Arising from the rich lands of the Niger River, it grew under the leadership of notable kings such as Sundiata Kita and Mansa Musa. At its peak, Mali not only ruled over vast territories, but also became a crucial pillar in trans-Saharan trade, especially in gold, salt, and other valuable goods. The Mali Empire came from complex origins, profoundly rooted in the changing dynamics of West African societies and in the transformations that occurred before the empire itself emerged. Prior to the rise of the Mali Empire, the Ghana Empire was the main force in the West African region. This ran a dominant role in trans-Saharan trade, but began to decline in the 11th century as a result of internal and external circumstances, including pressure from nomadic groups and perhaps over-exploitation of resources. The origin of the Mali Empire is closely tied to the Mandinka people and the tale of Sundiata Kita, a semi-legendary leader who is often portrayed in oral traditions as a hero of his people. He belonged to the Kita clan of the Mandinka ethnic group. According to the popular story called the Sundiata Epic, which is often passed on by storytellers, Sundiata faced great hardships in childhood. Born lame, he could not walk until later in his youth, according to tradition. Following his father's death, King Nari Magan Konate, Sundiata and his mother were sent into exile due to the machinations of Queen Sasuma Berete and her son, who saw Sundiata as a contender for the throne. During his exile, Sundiata acquired experience, allies, and prestige. He was called back to his homeland to free the Mandinka people from the tyrannical rule of King Sumaro Kante of the Soso Kingdom. During the Battle of Karina in 1235, Sundiata defeated Sumaro and established the foundations of the Mali Empire. Sundiata set up Mali as a federation of tribes and cities under a single authority. He brought in laws known as the Constitution of Kurakan Fuga, which laid down the rules of government, social rights, and good governance practices. Mali expanded under his leadership, controlling important trade routes and cities. Sundiata also set up the capital in the city of Niani. Led by Sundiata and his successors, the empire expanded rapidly, absorbing large areas of present-day Mali, Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, Niger, and other surrounding territories. In its heyday, it was one of Africa's richest and largest empires, based on the trans-Saharan trade in gold, salt, copper, slaves, and other goods. The area where the Mali Empire was founded was wealthy in resources, especially gold. Sundiata and his successors savvy in controlling and taxing the gold trade routes meant that the empire could amass wealth and expand its territory. Mansa Musa was one of the most famous leaders of the Mali Empire. Under his reign, it reached its peak in wealth, territory, and influence. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage to the city of Mecca in 1324 is fabled not least for the vast amount of gold he distributed along his journey, destabilizing local economies for a short time. Mansa Musa also became a leading patron of the arts and education. He commissioned the construction of the great Jinguruber Mosque in Timbuktu, one of the most prominent cities in the Mali Empire, which became a central hub of Islamic learning. Timbuktu's University of Sankore was one of the most prestigious of its time, attracting scholars from all over Africa and the Middle East. The griots, or bards, had an essential role in preserving and passing on history and traditions. They were highly respected and acted as storytellers, musicians, and advisors. Malian architecture, especially the building of mosques such as the Great Mosque of Djenne, is outstanding. There was also a strong tradition of wood carving and metalwork. Malian society was hierarchical, distinguishing clearly between the nobility, merchants, craftsmen, farmers, and slaves. The Mansa, or king, topped the hierarchy. Mali's economy was boosted by trans-Saharan trade. Mali's well-established commercial routes and strategic location made it extremely prosperous. Although the Mali Empire embraced Islam as its main religion, this adoption was frequently syncretic. Many of Mali's rulers, notably the famous Mansa Musa, were devout Muslims. Many traditional African practices and beliefs continue to thrive alongside Islam. Malians often practice Islam in combination with local beliefs, such as the worship of ancestral spirits. 
One of West Africa's largest kingdoms, the Mali Empire experienced several military clashes during its existence to expand, consolidate, and defend its territories. During Mansa Musa's reign from 1312 to 1337 and that of his successors, the Mali Empire frequently came into conflict with the Mosi kingdoms to the south. While Mali managed to repel raids and maintain their influence, they never managed to completely subdue the Mosi. In the late 14th and early 15th centuries, the rising Songhai Empire, previously a Malian vassal, began to challenge the Malian Empire's rule in certain regions, especially around Timbuktu and Gao. The Songhai Empire forces, commanded by Soni Ali, seized the city of Timbuktu, greatly reducing Mali's influence in the region. The Mali Empire's collapse followed a combination of internal and external factors that undermined its influence and power in the West African region. The Songhai Empire started to expand in power and influence. The Tuaregs in the north frequently invaded and took over areas controlled by Mali, undermining its influence in the Sahara region. Added to these events, the Mali Empire faced numerous internal power struggles and succession squabbles that greatly enfeebled the central administration. With time, the peripheral regions of the empire started to seek more autonomy, weakening the central power of the king. The decline in control over the Trans-Saharan trade routes, partially as a result of the rise of other powers and changes in trade routes, meant that less wealth flowed into the empire. While Mali was overwhelmingly Muslim, the influence of Islam grew deeper and more orthodox with the expansion of Islamic learning. This, at times, led to strains with traditional practices and beliefs. As new trade routes developed, particularly those that skirted the Sahara and focused more on the African coast, Mali's prominence as a trading center began to wane. These factors in combination over the course of the 15th and early 16th centuries meant that Mali lost its position as the main regional power. Its territory splintered, with many areas either becoming independent or coming under the control of the Songhai or other forces. Towards the end of the 16th century, the remnants of the Mali Empire had been limited to its original heartland around the capital in the city of Niani. Soon, even this area became vulnerable to attacks and raids. The Mali Empire has been one of the largest and most influential civilizations in African history, having a key role to play in the rise of Islam, the fostering of education, and the Trans-Saharan economy. The Mali Empire is also known for its rich cultural tradition, literature, and contributions to science and learning, influencing many of the empires and kingdoms that emerged in West Africa in subsequent centuries.